Okay, assalamualaikum and a good day to everyone. I hope you guys are safe at home or in the campus, right? So this is for, for my first lectures. I thought I try to make it short, probably within fifteen to twenty minutes. <clears throat> okay, um, um, these lectures will discuss about what we actually learned in the previous class. So it is about a control system analysis. There are three criteria that we can, you know, determine the system. The first one is a stability, a transient response, steady state response. So if we have a system, we, if we were to design a systems, we have to uh, make sure that the system has stability and then what is the transient response I mean the performance of the transient response and also the performance of steady state response so there are three uh, important things to uh, discuss here right okay let's look at number one which is stability so uh, the system is stable so how do, how do we determine whether the system is stable or not, right? So um, there are three stability conditions here. The first one is the system is, is stable, is marginal stable and unstable. There are three uh, stability conditions, right? So of course, there are many ways to say that system's uh, st stability so there are we can say that the system stability is the finite output produced by a finite input of the systems meaning that if the the output of the system is infinite even when a finite input applied to a system then the system is called unstable systems right there is Stable system has bounded outputs when bounded input is applied to a system. That is one of the definitions. The second one, we can also say that if a system is able to return to its operating states after a disturbance, internal and or external, then the system is considered stable. Stability is therefore is important requirement in the design of a system, especially feedback system where stability is not automatically guaranteed. Okay, um, well, uh, having a transfer functions that we derived before, how do, how do we determine whether the system is stable or not, right? So a simple way to determine the stability uh, of a system is by looking at the roots of uh, its characteristic equation in the transfer function. What is the uh, characteristic equation? Or we call it CE. The CE is the denominator of a transfer function, right? The denominator of transfer function, we call it CE. That CE will determine whether or not the system stable or not. Okay. Then, um, what is the criteria? Okay, the criteria uh, when we when we when we say the system is stable, we need to have a criterion, right? So a control system is said to be stable if all the roots of its characteristic equations are on the left half planes of the S plane, right? So we discussed earlier when the root is negative, right? Is on the left hand plane then we can say that the system is stable. Then we, we have proof that the system is stable using the time domain, right? Remember that it's e to the minus at, and we compare to e to minus e to the at, then we can see that e to the at will produce the uh, infinite uh, output. Hence, the system is not stable, right? So a control system is said to be marginally stable if the roots of its characteristic equation are on the imaginary axis. This one also we discussed in the class before. I'll explain after this. Otherwise, the system is unstable, right? So there are only 
uh, we can imagine that if the roots of the denominator of the transfer function is negative, right, we can say that the system is stable, all right? Whereas if it is positive, all right, the system is unstable, as simple as that. Okay, um, okay, come to the transient response, right? So the first one is uh, set stability. So we discussed about the stability just now, whether the system is stable, how the system is stable, and so on. Then let's have a look at the, step, the transient response. So look at this response. Okay, we have a system. When we input some things to the system, to the plant, then we will see what is the response of the, uh, the output. That's what we call it, response, the output response. The output response we can divide into two, uh, two sections. The first section is transient. The second section is steady state response. Steady state response is the response where the system is uh, stabilized after uh, some times we call it settling times right so um, that is uh, the first part is transient response the second part is steady state response so this in the uh, transient response we can we can we can actually determine uh, certain parameters uh, of the, the 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 response the system to produce that desired response okay All right, um, so we are talking about the systems, control system model, right? So uh, basically we have a systems, normally we call it GS, and then we have an input R of S and the output of Y of S in this form, yeah? In this form. So um, the output response okay remember the output response parameter are considered for stable system only so for stable system only we can analyze the output otherwise for unstable system we can't right we can we can we can analyze because the system itself is unstable so and then the output response is evaluated if the input is given right so the system is at rest when there's no input all right so when when there's a, some disturbance some inputs um, apply to the systems then the system will react that will produce the response okay so um, so this is our systems whatever system that we have let's say g of s one s plus one okay okay I'm sorry One second. Okay. Okay, this is our system, right? So we need to input certain you know input to the systems and then we'll observe the output, right? So we know that GS is actually um the systems transfer functions and then r of s is the input and then y of s is the output right okay okay there are certain inputs that we can apply to the systems um, okay look at this table right we have five different inputs, right? Test inputs. So, um, in order for us to test the response of the systems, we need to apply the input. Okay, there are five of them. The first one is impulse, step input, ram, parabola, and uh, sinusoid. Right. So, normally, in, mo in many cases, we use impulse and step input. Okay. So the, normally, uh, the most common uh, uh, input that we use to test the system is impulse and step, okay? Impulse input and step input, okay? Uh, 
All right. So let's talk about systems. A uh, system can be divided into uh, at least two type. The first one is uh, the first order systems. Although we have a zero order system, zero order system is pure gain systems, right? So we discuss about first order system and second order system or higher order systems. Okay, the first order system, look at the slide here, right? First order system is a system with a uh, first derivative term in it, right? The first derivative, only one and only first derivative. So um, let's consider okay. We have a system's first order system g of s to one over s plus ten. Okay, this is our systems. Okay, um, so this is our systems. Then we apply a step input to the system, which is um, this R of S. We apply one over S, the input, and then we need to see what is the response of the output, right? Yeah, it's not clear, okay. Okay, and then um, from here we can actually um, find y of s equals to 1 of s dot 1 s plus 10, right? Because, because g, at, g of s equal to y of s over r of s. Okay, and then uh, we can from here we can see the the we can we can find the time domain response using partial fractions, which is a yt, right? So we can see the response response in time domain. All right, using partial fractions, right? So this is y of t, s is equal to 1 minus e to the minus 10t, right? Okay, it means that you have to, you know, inverse Laplace of y of s equal to something, right? So then from, from these um, uh, um, expressions, right, um, if we plot, plot y t in time domain, we get this. This is y of t, t, all right? we can roughly get this um, response like this. So when uh, this is y t equal to minus 1 e to the minus 10 t. Right? Can you just see that? Okay. Okay, now, this is a first order systems. Okay. Okay, no matter what we actually um, uh, have here, if let's say the transfer function is s plus 20, 100, s plus 1, so the, the shapes of the response will be the same, right, for the step input. It will be the same except the slope will be different. Like that. Right, maybe this is. Uh, y of t, 1, e to the minus 100 t or something. Okay. So, so no matter what, we change the value of the, uh, uh, the 
the value of um, uh, you know the the transfer functions of the first order system so we can we can only um, you know change this slope 